Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Let's see, we got a new device here. It's called a shear. Today's shear. Let's put this on for a sec. You're saying there's a last minute sponsor. Let me check the last minute sponsor. I love last minute sponsors. Hold on. Today's share is being sponsored by Kenneth Milberg. Oh, Kalman. Why do you call him Kenneth? In honor of my beautiful wife, Erlene Bat Avram Avinu. All right, Rip Kalman. Sponsored by Nahum Eilberg in honor of his 16th Ali anniversary. And at Slacho Parnasa Toivo Brius Lubnoisai Elio Ben Simcha. This is a very interesting story, this guy right here. Fischl from Official Catering, who sponsors the turning of the page. I think I might be Yoitza now. He used to come every single day from Yerushalayim. Here he is. Oh, I see him. Eli Lavi. He's on Zoom right now. So he used to come every day, and he had a driver bring him. He would go through the shear, and then. And the driver would come in, he was bored, he came in, and he got hooked to the shear, unfortunately. So here he is, not only, so he made some money on the, on the taxi ride, but now he had to pay it back in a sponsorship. Gewaldik, that's how things work. Yishkoya, chatzlochu, perlosa toivo. So we have Kalman, there's a third one, I didn't have, to, I just realized, uh, Yosef just sent it to me, so Kalman, you should have atzlocha. I hope you're five for five, six for six. Rabbi said today we have a surprise demonstration that's never been done in the history of the Fyoimi. Hold on to your seats. And we are holding today's Daf Kuflam and Gimel. And we're holding, oh, before holding, we gotta read an email or two, right? Beautiful email here. Are you familiar with this guy? You see him probably every single day, and this is exactly what he looks like every day with his child on his lap. And he writes like this, Dear Rebbe Eli, thank you very much for your charts. I always knew they're good and it helps, but today you really showed how much it helps. I don't know, I think he might be referring to the Kavachimer charts. It makes it sound so simple when you make a chart like that. Thank you for all the time and effort you put into all the charts. And then he goes on to say, I'm sure 7.15 is a good time for most people because we're talking about moving the night chair, the 9.15 chair, which is like 2.15 in New York, to move it to 7.15 in the morning in New York so it's better, it's a better time for most people. 2.15 in the afternoon is a weird time. If anybody has some horror on that, please let me know when you think it will be most beneficial for most people. I'm sure 7.15 is a good time for most people, but I have a two-year-old and a one-year-old and mornings can be kind of hard. But we really try hard for me to listen to the sheer live. Sometimes we all listen together, see below, and that's the beautiful picture of him and his kid. You'll see him very often on Zoom with his kid. This one is from Yosef Mack. Hi, Rib Eli. I'm from Passaic. Don't forget about Passaic. Rib Eli said we need a representative in Passaic. But in Liberty, New York, for the summer, I join you Zoom Shear also. I want to let you know my father watches you Shear. My sister's father in law, Mr. Abram from Melbourne, Australia, joins the Zoom Shear. And we're hoping that he'll be up at 3 in the morning during the Seum. That's what time the Seum is on. August 16th, Sunday, August 16th, 8 p.m. Israel time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time, and 3 a.m. Australia time. I was in your night chair Wednesday, I joined with the phone audio, and it was unmuted, my apologies. So I'm reading this because there's actually a glitch on Zoom, I don't want to say this out loud, but sometimes, even though most people are... Oh, I see he's on right now, Yosef Mack. So do not worry, you don't have to apologize. It wasn't your fault. We mute everybody, but the guys on the phone sometimes become unmuted. So it's nothing to do with you. Yishkoyach for joining us. And here we go. We're the last words on Daf Kuflam and Beis and Beis. Mamish Nisim that we're holding where we need to be holding. Says the Gemara of Ahadurava Viraf Safra Tanoi. So we had a Machloikis. The fact that Mila overrides Tsaras. Rava says, you don't need a Pasuk. You have a Kavachayim. Rav Safar says, you need a Pasuk. Tanoim. Forget the Amaroim. We have Tanoim that discussed this already. Besanya. Besar. The extra word, Besar. Vavapish, Yeshom, Baher, and Simoil. The Torah tells us, the extra word, to tell us that it, oh, Mila overrides 
Otsaras. Divir Rabbi Yoshiya, so this is a Tano. Rabbi Yoshiya is an Oimer, not a Tano. Ene Tzarech. Shabbos, Hamura, Doicha, Tzaras, Likolchken. So that is this Kabachimer right over here. If Mila overrides Shabbos, that's the sugi that we had yesterday, that Mila overrides Shabbos. And Shabbos overrides Tzaras, not overrides, but it's more Hamur because look, if you Machal Shabbos, you get Misa, Skila, Kares, all these things, and the Torah talks about it, talks about it. So certainly Mila, which is on the top, should overcome the one on the bottom. That's the Kavachimer. I don't need a puzzle. Great. Now I see that Ezra Abrams is online. Ezra, Reb Ezra, are you going to be up at 3 o'clock in the morning? Tell me you're going to be up at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you're hesitating. You got to do it. We need somebody on that continent. I'm sorry. We need the Australia. Unless you get the guy from uh, Melbourne or somewhere. What are you talking about? It's too much. What day? Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, 3 o'clock in the morning. I hope it's Monday. not... Monday. It will be Monday, I think. Monday, 3 o'clock. No, you do anything. Look, people flew in from America for the Seum. You get up, shtickle. Well, you stay up. What's the big deal? <laughs> we'll talk afterwards. I see you're not so, not so comfortable. But we need, we need you. You'll sleep the day before or whatever. Fine. <laughs> Zok the Gemara. I thought I'd put some pressure on in front of everybody. There's a hundred people watching, listening. Fine. It's not working. Says the Gemara, Omar Amar. Nu sugyo. Besar. Afabishi yeshom beher zimo. I need a positive to tell me that if there's a tsaras on the brismila, you still perform a brismila. De rebi yeshio. Halam alikra. So now this is a typical sugi of Mesech the Shabbos. We had the sugi a bunch of times over. Very easy stuff. Why do we need a pasuk? I don't have intent to be Mechal Shabbos. So if I don't have intent to be Mechal Shabbos, I'm trying to make a bris mila. Just This is a side thing that's happening. What's the answer to that? We said it only six times, literally. I counted six times in this Mesech. There's going to be another two times afterwards. And even another time on this Amud. Says the Gemara, Vidav Shenim Skaven, Mutur, Amar Abaya. So Abaya surprises us here for a second because the, all the Gemaras that we had until now doesn't have this Abaya. You're right. It goes according to Rabbi Yehuda that says, Dav Shenim Skaven, So even though I don't intend to take off the Tsaras, but it's also. Tosis just points out that, very interesting, that in Shabbos, when it comes to Shabbos, Rabbi Yehuda says it's the Rabbanon to do so. You need melechas machsheves in Shabbos. You have to think about what you're doing. So really, it's only... It's a, but when it comes to brismila, then it comes to the raisa. How do I know it's the raisa? Because Rabbi Yudha says, don't perform the brismila. You, you can't say, don't perform the brismila, that the Rabbana pushes it off. The raisa and the rest of the Torah. When Dov HaShenim is and the rest of the Torah, it's, it's much more chamer. Only in Shabbos, there's a concept of melechas machsheves. I have to think about what I'm doing. Rav HaOmar, Afilu Temer, Reb Shimon. Moider Reb Shimon, this is what we're so familiar with. Moider Reb Shimon, Bipsik Reishev, Eloyamos. In a case where you chop an animal's head off and you say, Oh, I didn't realize he's going to die. Of course you realize. When it's inevitable, then even Reb Shimon agrees that it's usur, even in a case of any miscavin, you don't intend to do it. Vabaya, Lesle, Haisvara, Vabaya, Varava, the Amri, Tarvayu, these words. Six times already in the Masechta. Must be the most popular saying in the entire Masechta. Reb Shimon agrees in a Psikresha, even Reb Shimon, everybody, there's no Machlaikis, when it's 100% inevitable, then there's no concept of Dov Shem You can't say, oh, I didn't mean to cut off his head, I didn't realize he's going to die. If you see, if you're going to cut off his head, you're going to do something that's inevitable, he's going to lose his life, then it's also to do. So too, if you're going to cut off the mila, and on the mila there's a tzaras, and there's 100% the tzaras is going to come off. There's no, there's no ways around it. It's not a 50% chance, or a 90% chance, 100% the tzaras is going to come off. That's, a, that's also according to everyone, even Reb Shimon. Says the Gemara, so over here the Gemara the first time ever tells us that Abayu once upon a time argued with Rava. But Rava finally got to him, and Rava explained to him that it doesn't make sense, and he accepted it, he realized the logic of Rava, and that's why the Gemara always says, Abaye Rava, the Amri Tarvayu, meaning, well, he used to argue with Rava, but today, everybody is in agreement that everybody holds that Psikresha Veloyamos, 
that if it's a psikresha, then it's always usher to do. Says the the same exact thing, a little bit different. Some say this whole sugya on this. The Torah says, Hishomer. We had this pasta yesterday. Hishomer means a loisase. If you do, if you take off the tzuras, you have an loisase. Then it says, Lishmer velasois. Lasois is an ase, a positive. So it's a loisase and ase. What's this lasois? You shall do. Lasois yato oisa, abel oisa ato besiv shall gabe ragli moit shall gabe tzeifa. Says the Gemara that the Torah is telling me that I could act normal. I don't have to worry about putting on my shoes if I have a tzuras by my foot. I could put on my shoe and tie my shoe with the sieve. I could take a pole if this, I'm trying to carry something. I could put a, a piece of, I could put weight on my shoulder. That's all good. By the way, I'm looking now at Rabbi David from Manchester, and I, I realized that when I was going through the times, the time zones, I didn't realize that this individual, Rabbi David, he gets up every morning in, in the four in the four thirty area to be with the shir. We see him every single day on Zoom, but in England right now it's 5 o'clock in the morning. Chab, I didn't chab this. He gets up every morning that early to be with us. So you should call Rabbi David and all those guys from Manchester. Tremendous. Bim avra avra. So the halacha is, I could act myself. I put on my shoe. If my shoe rubs off the tzeras, so be it. I could put a, a weight on my shoulder. If the tzeras comes off, so be it. Says the Gemara, why do I need a special pasta glasses to tell me this? So we're going through the same sugya, the same, same exercise. That what? Ah, it's and I put on my shoe. I didn't mean to take off my tzuras. I want to be comfortable to walk in the street with a shoe. It goes according to Rabbi Yudah. And Rabbi Yudah is going to say, even in such a case where I don't mean to take off my tzuras, I mean to make my foot comfortable. It's also, it's also still also. <coughs> this could go according to Rabbi Shimon. It's literally word for word that we had a minute ago. Rabbi says, <coughs> this goes according to Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon agrees, Rabbi holds. Rabbi Shimon agrees that if it's inevitable, it's also asr. So since you're going to put on your shoe, it's going to rub off the tzuras. It's interesting that that's inevitable. Okay. In a situation, it's about asr. Ask the Gemara of Abayi, let's say Aisfara. Abayi doesn't agree with Rabbah. The Gemara always tells us, one after another. Everybody's in agreement that even Rabbi Shimon agrees that if it's a psikresha, you're going to chop off the head, the animal's not going to die. Of course that's also. After Rabbah convinced him, Abayi went to his camp. They, they're both in agreement. And therefore, we need a Pasuk to say, that it's mutter to put on a shoe, it's mutter to put a weight on your shoulder. Va'abayo, alibi the Reb Shimon. So now the Gemara says this. <clears throat> but once upon a time, there was a machlekes. Once upon a time, Abayo disagreed with Rava. If he disagreed with Rava, and he says that only according to Reb Yehuda to do Dov Shenim Skaven is Aser, but to do Dov Shenim Skaven according to Reb Shimon is mutter. Okay, so if it's mutter, then what does the word basar come for? According to Rishim, we have to understand what the word basar in his havamin. The Gemara just wants to understand his havamin. How could Abai even have a havamin? What is he going to do with the sexual word basar? Hi, basar, my avidli. Very interesting. There's a father, and he tells the mayol, I want you to take off the, the, the tzaras. Now, the mayol is going to take off the tzaras anyways. He has to make a bris milah. It's in the place of the milah. But the father wants it not for the mitzvah of bris. He wants it so that his son shouldn't be tame. Look, if his son has a beheres, son has a tzaras, and the son is in the house, everything in the house is tame. It's also not good for shiduchim, let's say. I, I want it off. So, says the pasuk, even if he had bad intent, it's okay. It's mutter. Now, Rashi says something very interesting here. Rashi says that the mayal is there and the father is in the room. The father is in the room. Meaning, and the Mishnah Lomelech points this out and the Mishnah talks about it. Very interesting. If the father is in the room, 
then the mile is forced to go with the das, the intent of the father. Even though it's an Avera, and Divri Arav, Divri Atalmija, but if I'm performing this shlichus, I'm a shliach for the father. I'm instead of the father. And the father is thinking his head, I'm, I want to do an Avera now, I want to take off a tzaras. I don't want to be Mikhail Mitzvah Asmila. And because he's standing there, says Rashi, he's standing there. If he's out of the room, we don't have an issue, says Rashi. Since he's right there, he forces his, his, um, <clears throat> his, his machshav on him. It could be it's on the, on the next line. So let's see. And there's no, there's no ain't shlich of the Varavera? That's exactly what I'm saying. It, there is no shlich of the Varavera. First of all, it's not an Avera. The Gemara says it's not an Avera. But because he's performing that mitzvah and he's there, he has to take on the father's das. That's what he says. The, that's, that's what he's coming to avoid. Rashi is, is talking about exact, this exact idea of Enchilich Zedvah Rivera. So let's see it inside. Ask the Gemara, V'ike acher, le'eved acher. So if there's another person, this Moel is standing there, obviously he's standing, the Moel is there, but the father is standing there, let the other person do it. So why is the father performing this? Let the mile do it. If I have a way out of it, I have a lois assay of tsaras, and I have an assay of mila, let, let us do it in a proper way, where there's no avera. Says the Gemara, It's better to do it in a way that the mile has kav- the right kavana, not the father's kavana, not the mile. Explains Rashi, he's not going to have a bad kavana, because what does the mile care? The mile doesn't care about tuma in that guy's house. The mile cares about the mitzvah of mila. If you don't have a choice, then you, you, the father can perform the mila. But I have a way out of it. Says the Gemara, the leka acher. We're talking about a situation. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no other person. And mila, that's the only way to perform it. And Shalom Yisrael. Omar Ma, Yantov ain't a doichel b'zman ablavad. Yantov, if you want to do a bris milah Yantov, it's the same thing like Shabbos. So if you had a baby, let's say the jaundice, the yellow baby, couldn't perform the milah on the eighth day, comes the milah on the tenth day and says, okay, let's do the milah, and it happens to be Pesach morning, you do not do milah. You could only do milah on Yantov like you do on Shabbos on the eighth day only. Minani mili. How do we know this? So the Gemara brings. Four sources for this. Omar Chizkiyo, Vechein Tanah Devei Chizkiyo, Omar Kro, Loi Soi Sirim Mimenu Ad Boiker. So we're jumping all the way to Karben Pesach. It says in the Pasuk, if you look at the Pasuk over here, Loi Soi Sirim Mimenu Ad Boiker. So what should the continuation be? You shouldn't leave over any of the Pesach, Karben Pesach, you should eat it all that night. Don't leave anything till the morning. If I just stopped here, anything left over, you should burn in the fire. So why does it say again, ad boiker? That word ad boiker is completely extra. I already said, you're ad boiker. I already said it's in the morning. Says the Gemara, because we're talking about two mornings here, the extra morning means to go to another morning. What's going on here? I made a carbon Pesach on Erev Yantav when it was a weekday. Erev Yantav is not Yantav yet. So if I have leftover from that carbon Pesach, when do I burn it? Do not burn it. Don't be Michal Yantav. Don't burn it on Yantav. When should you burn it? Burn it on Chalamayid. Boiker Shani. Don't, don't burn it on the first Boiker. On Yantav morning, burn it on Chalamayid morning. So too, if I have a bris milah that was supposed to be performed on a weekday, the eighth day fell out on a Friday, but you couldn't do it or whatever happened, you didn't have a mile. So don't do it on Shabbos. Do it on, on Sunday. Push it off to Biker, to the, the following day. Just like by a, a carbon, I don't burn the carbon when it's necessary on Yantav. I'm not Michal Yantav for the burning of it because it belongs to a weekday. It's a weekday carbon of, of Erev Yantav. So too, this mila belongs to a weekday. It was supposed to be performed on a Friday or on a Sunday. So you have no right to perform it right now on Shabbos. Abay Omar, another pshat. Omar, kro, oilas Shabbos b'shabatoi. 
you only are makriv a oila that belongs to Shabbos on Shabbos. That's the only oila you makriv on Shabbos. Do not bring on a Mizbeach the oila that belongs to Friday. You forgot to bring it on the Mizbeach. You don't bring it on Shabbos. And not on Yantav. So too, Brismila. Don't perform a Brismila on Yantav that belongs to Chayl. Rav Amar Amakro, who levado yiosa lochem. Oh, beautiful pasuk. This pasuk is talking about oichel nefesh. Food, you allowed to be mechal yantav for food. So what does the pasuk say? Kol melacha lo yiosa b'hem. You are not allowed to do any melacha yantav. Ach, however, there's an exception. Asher yiochel lochel nefesh. Oichel nefesh. This is how we have the concept of oichel nefesh. And then it says. Who levado yiosa lochem? What? Why those two extra words? Who levado? Only oh, sorry. Only those who levado. Those two who levado. So what's who levado? Only this. It already says yiochel for oichel nefesh. Why does it have to say only him? So we learn two things from the words who and levado. Who v'loy machshirit? I cannot make a pot on yantiv. To cook up the food. I could cook food, but not a machshu, not a preliminary. Levadoi. Viloi milo shlebizmano. Levadoi. Only oichel nefesh. Only food. I'm allowed to be mechal yantav for. But do not be mechal yantav for milo shlebizmano. Why would I think that you could? Da'asim mi kavachoymer. Because I have a kavachoymer. Says Rashi, what's the kavachoymer? So it says, this is the Kav HaChoymer. Basically what we had yesterday, but instead of Shabbos in the bottom, we have Yantif. And instead of Mila, it's really Mila Shalei Bizmana. I added the extra words, Shalei Bizmana. Mila Shalei Bizmana pushes off Tzaras. That we saw already. It doesn't matter how old the person is. It could be a person who's 95 years old and has Tzaras. We do a Mila, even though it has Tzaras. So it's not Dafka Bizmana, not Dafka 8 day old. So Mila is overrides Tzaras. Tzaraz overrides Avoida that we said yesterday. <clears throat> if a Kayan, all the Kayan in the world have Tzaraz, they do not perform the Avoida. So nobody will bring that year a carbon Pesach. So Tzaraz overrides Avoida, and Avoida overrides Yantav because Yantav were Makrib Karbanas. So therefore, certainly Mila, which is on the top of the list, should override Yantav. So, Vilay Mila Shlavizmano, the Asim, Mikhail Choymer. So I would think that this Kav HaChoymer works. That's why the Torah tells us, no, Shloi Bizmana doesn't work. Ravashi Omar Shabbosoin. Asehu. A lot of charts just for this sugya. So if you look over here, Kav Meleches Avoida Loi Sasu. What's a Loi Sasu? doesn't get any easier than that. It's a Loi Sasu. But then the Pesach says, it's another pasuk, but in the same parak. The first and last days of Yantif are Shabbosin. And the Gemara says Shabbosin is a lashon of an assay. So we have a lois assay, lois asu, and we have Shabbosin. So it's an assay and lois assay. Shabbosin assayu, vavale Yantif assay, lois assay. So if so, chil Yantif, you're over on two things, on an assay and a lois assay. When I say the assay of Milo, Shalib is Mano, when I say Doicha, it's Lois Asay Vasay. But Bismano, that we know that there's a pasuk that you have to do. Shalib is Mano is only an assay, only an assay, and that goes up against the assay and a Lois Asay. First of all, it's two against one, but even simpler. One assay washes out the other assay, and now you're left with a Lois Asay. Anyantif, which overcomes the Mila Shaloi Bismana. Klal Omer Akiva. Omer Avi Omer Rav. Halachik Rebbe Kiva. So Rebbe Kiva holds, and we said Chacham hold like him and did the Rav against Rebbe Liazer. That preliminary Machshire Mitzvah do not are not Doicha Shabbos. Omer Avi Omer Rav. Halachik Rebbe Kiva comes around Rav and says. Halach is like Rebbe Kiva, and that we saw in the other sugya with Rebbe Liazer, that Halach is like Rebbe Kiva. Shamuti, remember, he's a yachid, the rabbi, Shamuti. Usna nami gavi Pesach ki And similarly, we have the same exact Halacha by Pesach. 
Any melacha, when it comes to the carbon Pesach that you can perform before Shabbos, you perform before Shabbos. And if you can't, it doesn't push off Shabbos at all. So let's say to bring an animal from a chutz l'tchum for a carbon Pesach, you cannot do on Pesach. Bring it before, bring it before Shabbos. So if, if your Dalet Nisan falls out on Shabbos, you're supposed to bring your, your animal and your gimel. Whatever you can do before. Shechita, she'ev shalat soysim every Shabbos. But you can't perform a shechita a day earlier. It must be on Erev Yantif. And Erev Yantif is Shabbos. So that's it. So you, that, that pushes off Shabbos. Doich is a Shabbos. Vam Rav Yehud, Vam Rav. Halacha ki Rebbe Kiva. Comes Rav and says, the halacha is like Rebbe Kiva. So Taisus asks, what do I care if the halacha is like Rebbe Kiva? Why is that important to me? I live today in 2020. So who cares that you could bring a carbon Pesach Says Taisvis, and, and Taisvis says, we ask that question all the time. Why are you telling me halacha lemaisa when it's not lemaisa? There's no carbon pesach today. To, says Taisvis, to bring out how strong we are that the halacha is like Rebekiva when it comes to Shabbos. The halacha is not only in Shabbos, everywhere, by Pesach. There. So th- this idea of machshiri mitzvah, the halacha is like Rebekiva. Okay. Says the Gemara Tzricha, I need Rav to tell me that halacha is like Rebekiva. In Shabbos and by Mila. The Ashmin Gabi Mila, Hosamu the Machshirin, Evshalas, Swiss Mass, Moil, Lodahu Shabbos, like a chorus. There's no chorus by Brismila of a baby. There is chorus by an adult. But there's no chorus by a baby. And even if the father doesn't perform the Mila, the baby's for sure not going to get chorus if, if he d- didn't have a bris done to him when he was eight days old. But even the father who doesn't perform the bris doesn't get chorus. Ava Pezel, they get chorus, Emilitu Shabbos. Let's say I messed up. He forgot to bring the animal. Oops, I forgot. I thought you were going to bring it for me. I was well, fine. So maybe since it's Karis, you should go and bring the animal on Shabbos. No. Kumash will not. Pesach, Pesach doesn't have the 13 brisos that we said yesterday. So powerful. And Noah asked the Kasha, which, uh, which later on found out it's in the, in the Rajba. Arishan's Kasha, yes, yesterday. Avo Milo, the Nikhusola, you'd give me He saw, I was like uh, uh, stumped. Rishon's kasha. Ava mila the nichus olah you give a resource. Aim a litchus shabbos. Tzricha. Okay, so each one has a churma. That's why I have to say the bris has you give a resource. Pesach is karis. Fine. Says the Mishnah, an amazing Mishnah that teaches us a little bit about bris mila. And guess what? We're gonna have a demonstration. Oisin kol tzarchi mila b'shabbos. When it comes to Mila, you do all what's necessary for the Mila on Shabbos. Ochil Shabbos. Mayalin. Mayalin means you take off the Arla, the foreskin, the skin on top. Upoirin. Oh, uh, what's Pyrin? So for this, we need a shtickle demonstration. Never been done before. Bring the kid. Bring the kid. First of all, here's a knife with blood on it from the bris that I was a sandik. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use a different knife. For this baby, we have to use a, a clean one. So I have here a knife. Here, we have a, a peanut. Because I didn't understand what this was when I first uh, learned this. I want to share with you what I found. So we're going to do a little bris. Okay, hold on. So now I'm going to remove the Arla. Oh, 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 it's not working out so well. Oh, okay. Fine. This, Rabbi Isai, is called the Atara. I don't know if you can see. Inside, and in English, it's called Corona. Believe it or not, it's called Corona. I'm not joking. Now, on the Atara, there's a very, very thin layer of skin. This has nothing to do with the foreskin that we take off, that everybody's familiar with. You see this red thing? That's the foreskin. So the mile goes like this. With his fingers, with his sharp nail, he removes the atara. Uh, uh, he removes this foreskin. This, it's also called arla. But this is the priya. That's what priya is. He takes off, and now he exposes the atara completely. Fine. That's it. I, I, here, took off this part. Now, that's priya. You're not going to make a bracha and eat it? 
like the the whatever that other thing. Baruch Atah Adi Noy Leinam Chaylom Berei Priya Adama. Fine. So nobody's chayshe that it's uh, it's the real thing. Fine. Now we're gonna we're gonna get to one more nekuda about this priya because there's a so it's a small film of skin that the knife doesn't get to and the moil does it with his finger he takes it off. Umaititzin, and you draw blood. You have to draw blood. The and, has to detach it. Or yeah. Detached and he just pulls it off. No, no, it has to be completely detached, and that's we're gonna see in a second. It's called tzitzin. This is called a tzitz. This little piece is a tzitz. And some, if you leave too much on, you leave a rive, it's called tzitzin hama'akvin. There's no mila. You haven't performed the mila if you don't take off that, that, that uh, thin skin. No, th- did anybody know what that was before? Before this demonstration? I, I didn't know so much. Anyway. You have to draw... We definitely, we definitely now understand what the is. No, no, we're getting to that now. I didn't say bepe. I said umoitzitzin. You draw blood. Now, we're gonna. It's actually a very big sugya of mitzitza bepe. You have to draw blood. Yeah, that's the way you do it. Now, why do you draw blood? It seems from the Gemara, and that's the huge controversy here. And as we're gonna go through the sugya, we're not really gonna get to it until the end of the day. If we even get to it, we will see why. Many believe, and big Dailam believe, of the later, of, you know, the Chsam Soifer, the Ksoy, that it's not necessary. That the Metzitza, the drawing of the blood, is not really part of the Mila, as much as it is to save the baby's life, is to draw the blood for Sakana. So therefore, it doesn't necessarily have to be Bepeh. It doesn't say anywhere in the Mishnah of Bepeh. It says, Metzitzim, draw, suck, draw the blood. V'nois nimalea is pelanis v'chamoin. And you're allowed to take, uh, um, what is it called, Avi? The um, you put it on the the wound, the um, the sp- uh, no, Avi. Bandage. Bandage. Thank you. Take the bandage with cumin chamoin. Now that's obviously on a regular Shabbos you can't do that. It's shchikas samamanim. It's medicine. In loy shalhag Shabbos. What if you didn't grind the chamoin, the cumin erev Shabbos? In those days, they believed that's the healer. Loyes b'shinov, then you chew it with your mouth. You don't put it through a grinder. You chew it with your mouth. What is that called? Shinui. I'm doing it differently than I typically do. In Torah of Yam Yishem of Shabbos, another thing that they used to put a concoction of wine and oil, and they'd do trifa, they would beat it, and they would put it on the wound. If you didn't beat it before Shabbos, you nosen zeva atzmoy, zeva atzmoy, so you pour the oil, you pour the wine into a bowl, and instead of beating it, now you have a mixture of wine and oil. And you don't make a sleeve that goes over the bris. That would be creating a, a garment on Shabbos. You take some sort of rag or a bandage, and that's okay. What if you don't have a bandage right there? You put the bandage on your own finger. Even from another chatzar, seems like you don't do it through a Rosh Hashanah. Kuflam and Gimelam and Beis by Fischl. Says the Gemara. We're ready. The Mishnah tells us a whole list of things you could do for a bris milah. All the Chil Shabbos you could do. So why does the Mishnah say kol tzarkei? What else did the Mishnah forget to say? Says the Gemara. Hamal. Hamal. Kol zman shoyisik b'milah. Choyzer, so listen to these words. As long as the Moel is performing the Mila, he's there, his hands are there, he's, his head is there, he's into it. He's still performing the Mila. Machloik is showing him, is pre a part of it, not, but he's there. He didn't walk away, he didn't start saying, okay, uh, Kriya Hashem. He's there. Choyzer, bein ala tzitzim ama akvin, misamilo, bein ala tzitzim shenim akvin. It's Shabbos. How much could he cut over there? He could cut as much as he wants to take off all the tzitzin hama'akim in makim. So, I don't know. I have here, I had to glue it because these things come off. But let's say this is that Torah. This is that Torah. So here's the tzitzin ma'akim. 
Maybe. You see, there's a, there's a lot left on it. Here's the other side, white. Here's red. That's bad. I need to get the roiv off. I can't have roiv. I can't have the skin roiv on. That's my akiv. So, even if he walked away, everybody agrees he could come back because he didn't perform a bris milah. But the little pieces, the little things, that you have to only do while you're in action, while you still perform the bris milah, you can't come back later because that's not ma'akev. So even if I say job done, the kid is mole. Halachically is mole. It's not a beautiful milah. And we're going to see that a beautiful milah is very important. But it's okay. It's a shvach milah. By the way, I just remembered an unbelievable thing. Nothing to do with the sugya, but the Ribn Tzarebbe, everybody knows, in America, the Ribn Tzarebbe was considered very, very holy. Now, as much as my father was a Litvak, my father didn't hold of any Rebbes, but he held of the Ribn Tzarebbe. And you take me to the Ribn Tzarebbe, every single Matzah Shabbos, the Ribn, people will tell you, Nisim, about the Ribn So when I walked into the Ribn every Matzah Shabbos, you tell everybody, see this kid? Ich habem ge Yiddish. I made him Jewish, because he was a male. I used to tell everybody he was my male, even though, n- not in this world, not in this Gilgal, maybe in a different one. But the problem is that he used to tell everybody, this kid, he's the Galadar. He's the next Galadar. Mordechai and David was a big chassid of his. He used to hang out there. He said, this kid, everybody used to run around asking me for brachas, because the Rebbe said, I'm the Galadar. Every month Shabbos, you take me, put me on, my, on his lap. Yichabim Yiddish, as the good Galadar, finish, end the story. I forgot, that, we're talking about Mila here. Fine, halavai, halavai. Anyway, he says the Gemara, maybe when I'm 90. You never know. He's, he, ask all the Hasidim in New York, they'll tell you. Ruach HaKodesh, they all still go to his cave, the whole thing used to live in Seagate. Fine. We used to go there, Mosi Shabbos after Avdali, he was holding in the middle of Mincha. He was Lamalev and Azman. Zog the Gemara. So, Choyze ben al tzizim ma'akim in Samilo, ben al tzizim she'im ma'akim in Samilo. Perash. Once the moil walks away, he has to come back because there's still skin left, left there. He didn't perform a mila. He doesn't come back. Now, we're going to go into a whole sugi now about this. Once you move away, you made a hefzik, so to speak, you can't come back. Who says this? Who says this halacha? You have sick. Maybe, maybe I could come back. Maybe I could come back two hours later and fix it up. Mantana Whole sugi. All the way, it's going to bring us to most of the thing here. This is Rabbi Yechanan, the son, Rabbi Shmuel, the son of Rabbi Yechanan Mabroika. The son of Rabbi Yechanan We had this sugi, Rabbi Yechanan. You should all know this inside out. You perform the carbon Pesach on Shabbos itself because that's when it fell out. We're talking about skinning the animal. So how do you skin the animal typically? You take the skin off from the legs all the way up until you get to his chest. On a weekday, I'm talking about. Get this chest, you make an incision in the animal, you remove the ivarim, the imurim, and you put it on the mizbeach. Why do you have to take the skin off? If you remember, recall the sugya, because you don't want the small hairs. The Gemara says, make a, a laparoscopic surgery, whatever it's called. Just make an incision right there with the skin and take the imurim out. No, I don't want small hairs to go inside and touch the imurim. These, you would look at them and say, oh, nasty. But I'm putting that on the Mizbech. It needs to be perfect. Great. Now, I already finished putting the Imurim on the Mizbech. I want to go and continue removing the hide. So the way I had a Machlaikas. Rabbi Shemal says, you don't. You just leave it there up until his chest. It's not a problem. Remove the whole thing. Rabbi Shemal says, you stop. You see, he holds this half sick. Once I made a half I walked away, I took the Imurim, I cannot continue. If I was in the action of doing it, pull it all off. But since I made a half so over here also by the Mila. He thought the Mila is over. Yes, he has a couple tzitzin that are not makiv. It's not a big deal. A little bit of skin somewhere. Too late. I made a half Says the Gemara, oh, listen to this. You're not going to believe this. Mimai. Who told you? I can like every small bunch of beer from the Hassam by skin of a dead animal. Mission the Lord being in the Kaleb and Veil. There's no mitzvah of beautifying an animal. Aval Hacha by Bris Mila. The being on the Kaleb and Veil. You believe what's going on here? It makes a lot of sense. The other day we were learning about David Amelech who realized that when he was in the base of Merchatz he has a mitzvah on him all the time. That mitzvah needs to be beautiful in the best way you can possibly. 
beautify bris milah. If that requires you to remove all the tzitzin and, and do beautiful stitches, whatever it is, you have to do it. Who would ever think of such a Allah? On a bris milah, on your own body, you have to beautify it. Yeah, very interesting. Hachanami, says the Gemara, so Hachanami, maybe in Hachanami, you have to be Michal Shabbos to beautify for a mitzvah. This anyo, Zekeli Vanveyu, famous Gemara. What does it mean? Zekeli? I want to beautify Hashem. How can you beautify? Go, what are you going to go into Shemaim, climb, climb into heaven and beautify Hashem? It doesn't make any sense. What it means is the mitzvah. You have to beautify mitzvahs. It's not lefano be mitzvahs. I say lefano sukkah no, velulav no, v'shoifer no. Every mitzvah should be the best of the best, the nicest of the nice. Don't be just yoytzezayin. Beautiful sukkah, beautiful tzitzis. With tchelas, yeah, it costs 200 shekels. Blue strings matter. A nice, even some people, Rishonim say, even a nice beged. It should be like an expensive beged that you put the tzitzis on. Sefer Torah no, a beautiful Sefer Torah. Expensive. Uch soifboy l'shmoy b'dyoy no. You write it with Akash Baruch Hu's, with the intent of Akash Baruch Hu, with beautiful ink, the best ink, Bekumasna, meaning nice writing, Belavler Uman, the best cipher. Yeah, you could get a Sefer Torah today for $25,000, $30,000. You could get a Sefer Torah for $100,000. The more you pay, usually, I mean, you get what you pay for. You get a, the most experienced cipher that's a beautiful, calligraphical ksav. It's a bigger mitzvah. And you wrap the Sefer Torah with beautiful uh, silk. Today, the mantles, whatever it is, or the Sephardim do it like unbelievable with those boxes, the, 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 the whole case. Probably costs more than the whole Sefer Torah, made out of silver and gold. Abishol Oimer, listen to this. This Rabbi Isai, I believe, it might be the line of all of, all of Yiddishkeit, right here. Abishol Oimer, v'anveyu. Havedoy meloi. It's a famous line. You should be similar, you should mimic a Kalish Baruch Mahu chanun v'rachum, afato heyei chanun v'rachum. Vanveyu is a combination of two words, ani v'hu. How, how is a person supposed to be davik in HaKadosh Baruch Hu? His davik boy, Rashi says. L'davik bidrachov. How do you become? By mimicking him, by imitating him. The, the other day I was taking my son to a, a Faherani yeshiva, and I overheard how he's talking to the yeshiva. The yeshiva said, what do you want to be when you get older? And I, I couldn't believe it. I thought he was going to say, I want to be a real estate man, like my dad. He didn't say that. He said, I want to give shiurim like my father. And on the spot, I started to cry, literally. I couldn't believe it. I never heard him say it, and that's what he said. And I think, because a father's biggest nachas is when his son wants to be like him. Everybody loves themselves, and his son wants to be exactly like him. So when you want to be like HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that gives HaKadosh Baruch Hu nachas. So you have to be rachom, v'chanon. And just as Rav Vigna Miller says, as a practical thing, I was thinking, what, what practical? Rav Vigna Miller says, because Baruch Hu smiles at everybody every day. It says, Yor Hashem Panu Beilecha. So you should smile at least to one person a day. Smile to one man a day. Give him a smile. And then he says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, Moida Novim Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu lifts up people, gives them chizok. So you give a nice word to somebody. It's practical. Then you're like HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Give a guy a nice word. Somebody in this neighbor told me, a guy came over to him after shul and, and gave him a Musa Shmuz for five minutes. Mamish, you're not right in this. And he looks at him and he says, uh, excuse me, like, why, why are you giving me Musa? He says, what do you mean? Rabbi Vigdim Miller said, you have to give chizik to everybody once a day. Once a day, you have to give chizik. It's like, you can, nah, not put a guy down, lift the guy up. Fine. Okay, another try. Who is the one that says that once the moil moves away, it's a hefsik and you have to, you, you can't go back. This nan, ben shenira ba'alil, u ben shaloy nira ba'alil, mechalam is a Shabbos, we're talking about Kiddush HaKadosh. So if I'm an aid, I see the moon, I run to the base of Mikdosh, on Shabbos, I'm mechal Shabbos. Now, but if it's obvious that everybody in Yerushalayim saw it, I don't have to come. It's not necessary, necessary for me to come. Well, that's the whole thing. You do go anyways, that, that, that whole sugya. But it's Shabbos. Shall you be Michal Shabbos? Machloikis. Rabbi Yaisi Oimer, Im Nira Ba'alil, Ei Michal Amas Shabbos. So, Rabbi Yaisi is of the opinion, since it's not necessary, don't do it. So also over here, the tzitzim, that are not ma'akiv, they're not necessary, don't be Michal Shabbos for them. 
Says the Gemara, "Memai dimat kan lekomer biyosi hasam by kiddush achoydish the lenit the Shabbos li dachais." Because he didn't start being mechal Shabbos. Don't be mechal Shabbos. Aval hacha by bris mila the mile is already mechal Shabbos. The nit the Shabbos dach. Hachin ami maybe he should finish off the job. He already started the job, so finish off the mitzvah properly. El amri nar doy rabbon in the pli gali the biyosi he. It's somebody else. By the lechem upon him on the shulchan, you have the twelve breads, so they switch out the breads on Shabbos. So to switch out the breads, you need eight people. Four to bring in the new loaves of bread. One person brings six, the other person brings six, that's two, just for the breads. And two people bring in the spoons of frankincense. Fine. The bezichen. And then you need four opposite them to remove the breads and to remove the bezichin. Says the Gemara, the two spoons of frankincense. And four go in front of them. The ones that are more important, they're bringing the fresh bread, they should stand on the northern part of the Beis Hamikdash. My favorite chart. But then here's the, here's the, the shulchan goes from east to west this way. And they're going to stand on this side of the shulchan. On the north side of the shulchan, the other guys are going to stand on the south side of the shulchan. Okay? Fine. They're facing south. And the ones taking out the bread stand on the other side of the shulchan, on the south side of the shulchan. And they're facing north. The guys are going to remove the bread, and the other people are going to push the bread, the new breads in. The breads are touching each other. The new breads are pushing the old breads right out. Why? They have to be there constantly. There has to always be bread in the lechem in the shulchan. You could even come back five hours later, as long as it's not overnight. It's not avzeo yotamid. Oh. So Chachamim will say that they can't be a hefzik at all. One bread has to touch the other. So Chachamim is going to hold that this mail has, conti- has to be one continuation. If he moves away, he stops doing it. End of the story. One quick sugya here. Tan Rabbanan, Mahalkidim Samila, you have to take off the tzitzim hama'akvim. Bim lo'i hilked, and if you don't take it, the tzitzim hama'akvim, onush karis, you get karis. Mani, who's going to get karis? For what? Omer Rav Kahana Uman. It's on Shabbos. What happened was, the moil came and he did a bris milah. What did he do? A chabura. But he didn't finish the milah. He left all the, 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 the skin on the corona, on that Torah. He left it tzitzin. It's not a good milah. So it's not a good milah. He's Michal Shabbos. He did half a job. Says the Gemara, Masculara, Papa, Uman I get cars for this. I know I have the palgad mitzvah. I don't have the palgad mitzvah. I owe you something. You, you hired me to do bris milah. I did half the job. Now you take over. You do the other half. Why should I get karas because I did half the milah? Where does it say I have to do the whole thing? I took off the foreskin. You take off the priya. What's the problem? You do the priya. El Omer Papa Godoil. We're talking about an adult. And he performed the bris milah. Let's say a Russian. He's 50 years old. He decides to do a bris milah. He has, even he could enlist a mile, a professional to do it for him. The mile does half a job. And he left him the tzitzin. So, so now, this guy's walking around without a bris mila. He thinks because he chopped off the foreskin, he's a mole. No, you have to take off, the, you have to do priya. And he didn't do priya. So he's chay of cars because he lived his life without a bris. For that I don't need a brisa. It's more fortunate than the Pasuk, if a, if a Godel doesn't have a bris, and this is not considered a bris, he's chayv karas. And, and Tysus points out, it shouldn't say, vim lo hilket onish karas. Yeah, sometimes the, the, the brises say things that are in the term of furish, but the way it says it is the wrong way. We're going back to the moil. Why would a moil be chayv karas? And remember, Ravashi, because he's the one that wrote the Gemara, he's always last, usually. So he gets the last word here. We're talking about a very simple situation. It's Shalash this time. It's almost Mayrev. Doilam is going downstairs to Mayrev. 
And this mile decides he's going to do a bris mila with two minutes left of Shabbos. So everybody starts screaming at him, what are you doing? Shabbos is going to be over in two minutes. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. He takes the baby and he starts cutting, chopping. And before he knows it, he did half a bris and it's Matzah Shabbos. People are already smoking and everything. So what he did was, he's Michal Shabbos. Because he, 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 he caused the wound on Shabbos and he didn't perform the bris mila on Shabbos. He, the, the end of the bris mila happened on Sunday. So Mameli is Chayv Karas. Why? For the Chil Shabbos, not for the bris. The Chil Shabbos, he had no right to start the bris. People warned him, don't do it, don't do it. And he didn't listen to them. You're going to run out of time. No, I know how to do it. I'm a professional. And he, of course, everybody was right. He was wrong. And it turned out that he created a wound. And for that wound, he's Chayv Karas. Rabbi said, have a wonderful Shabbos. Have a Gavalika day. Noam, please say something to Hillem. Nine thirty, what's the shop as usual time? But nine thirty, we're not changing yet. What's that smile, Mati? What's going on there? I'm, I'm a little suspect. Uh, I don't, what's going on? Why is Doylem so uh, excited after this year today? <laughs> Listen. I'll tell you the truth. I, I was worried. I was worried to search on the internet for pictures of Amila, and then, so I like I was thinking to myself, what should I do? I said, you know what? I'm not is safe enough. What is it? <laughs> what do you say, Fivish? Not <laughs> 